that came to the slaughter. Jesus never opened his mouth. From the trial to the crucifixion, and from the grave it was laid out. After three days in the garden tomb, I can hear the angels sing. As the Lamb came forth, as the Lion and the Lion became the King. Well, you won't find him again at the whipping post, standing there so weak. No, he won't be nailed to a rugged cross through his hands and through his feet. There'll never be another Calvary, cause you don't have to prove one thing. The day Wow. 
district overseer when I pastored Taylor's and he took me over and introduced me to that crowd. I ain't never forgive you for that. <laughs> but I appreciate him. I love him. He's been around the church of God as long as I don't know. But he was probably one of the first ones I've ever seen in the church of God. But I love him and I appreciate him. And we're very fortunate this morning to have him as homecoming and we will be having service tonight and he'll be back preaching for us again tonight. So you ladies ain't got to cook. You already cooked. So go home and take your nap and be back for church tonight. Let's give him another big hand so he comes to greet us. Thank you, Brother Lovis. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I tell you, it's been a treat just to be here and hear the music this morning. And enjoy the worship. Yeah, that's been a treat to me. Betty will be with us tonight. She travels around with me. And uh, women seem to get tired before men do. I don't know what it is. But I told her she could just stay home this morning. So she went to her church today. Good to be here. Good to be with Brother Lovish. I'll tell you. If I could sing like that. You know. And I know how he preaches. And I know how he sings. And then I look back and you got Brother Caldwell here. Brother Taylor's here. You don't need nobody to come in and preach. You've got preachers, amen. But it's good to be here, and it's a privilege to be, be here to enjoy your homecoming uh, with you today. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to one verse of Scripture, or one passage of Scripture, in the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter. And I'm going to ask if you would just stand in honor of the Word of God, the reading of the Word, pray. Genesis chapter 5. I'll visit a little bit tonight, but this is homecoming day, and uh, we're just going to have church. Is that okay? Amen. Genesis chapter 5, beginning at verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let us pray. Eternal Father, I love you today, and I thank you for your love and mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have this morning to worship with this great congregation. Thank you, Lord, for this church that loves God, that honors God with their worship and their praise. Father, we're so thankful today that we can celebrate homecoming with them. I pray now, God, that you would anoint the few words that we'll say today. Anoint them, Father, and if you anoint them, then they will go right to the heart that you have them intended for. And Father, hide us behind the cross and let Jesus be glorified. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. And amen. And you may be seated. Amen. This is one of the most fascinating and thrilling scriptures in the entire Bible. It sounds more like a song from a heavenly world than a historical fact about a human being that walked on the face of the earth. It simply states that each of us, you and I, because God is no respecter of person, that each of us that for each of us, it is possible for us to walk with God. Amen. Now the entire story or history of Enoch is contained in nine verses in the Bible. In the Old Testament, there are six verses that talk about Enoch. And in the New Testament, there's only three verses that talk about Enoch. And outside of the Bible, there's no history whatsoever People are totally unacquainted with Enoch, yet he was honored as no other human, only one other human, had ever been honored. And that was the simple fact that he was not because God took him. Amen. Can you imagine that? So today what I want us to look at, I want us to look at three things from this story. First of all, I want us to look at the walk with God. And then I want us to look at the results of walking with God. And somewhere in here we're going to talk about how we develop this walk with God. Amen. 
You see, if I would ask you today, what is the walk with God? There are many of you here in this sanctuary this morning that can tell, the, tell me the answer to that. Amen? Because you know what it is. You have walked with God for, for many, many years. You have that companionship with the Heavenly Father. It is a walking, talking relationship with Him, and you know what it is. One writer said, to walk with God is to live your life in a consciousness of God's presence and to be in communion with Him. Amen? Amen. To live your life in a consciousness of God's presence and to live in communion with Him. The scripture just simply says, God beside me. Now Enoch walked with God, not on rare occasions, not when he had a great service on Sunday night, but Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. He walked with him on a daily basis. Amen? That means in the morning when things were good, he walked with God. When things were bad, he walked with God. He walked with God all the time of the day and the night. Now Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah. Now people are wondering why he didn't walk with God before he begat Methuselah. I can't tell you that. The scripture doesn't tell you. And I can't go beyond the scripture. There's some theories that are in the word of God. But I simply think when a man begins to have his family and have his children, if he's ever going to walk with God, that's the time for him to do it. Amen. So that he can raise his children in the way that God would have them to go. And so here he, he simply says that he walked with God. The songwriter said it this way. He said hand in hand he walked each day. Hand in hand along the way. Hand in hand I cannot stray. Hand in hand with Jesus. So understand today that Enoch walked with God. Now, now in that walk with God, let's just look at what it is. What is that, that walk with God? Amen. Now, that walking with God, first of all, the results of it uh, is there is an abundance of joy to walk with God. There's great joy in walking with God. Those of you that are walking with God this morning, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Those of you that do not know what it is to walk with God, I hope by the time this day is over today, you will understand what it is to walk with God. Amen. The scripture says in the book of Psalms 16 and 11, in thy presence is fullness of joy. And there's no greater joy than to walk with God, to commune with God, to be in fellowship with God. So understand, if you're going to walk with God, you're going to know what it is to have the fullness of joy. Now the world is looking for joy. This is a sad world we live in. If we had time to, uh, to cover it this morning, this is a sad world this morning. There are folks down in Florida today that don't know whether they'll even have a house tomorrow or not, you know. Uh, there are folks out in Texas that haven't even dried out last week from, uh, from all of the flood. And you wonder, how is that? How is that joy? It's joy because if you know God, you know He still has everything under control and everything's all right. Amen. When you laid your head on your pillow last night, uh, if you knew you were walking with God, I'll guarantee you, you knew everything was all right. Amen. You just kind of laid it down and gave it to Him. To walk with God is not only great joy, but to walk with God is a great sense of security and peace. Yes. Anything you want in this world more than security and peace? I grew up on a cotton mill down here in Greenwood, and, and I don't ever remember as a boy that we locked the door. I don't ever remember that we uh, uh, that we had to lock a window. I, I don't remember, even if we had to lock the door, we all had a skeleton key, and one key would fit every door on the whole village, so you know. Uh, <laughs> well, but we, we didn't worry about security. We didn't worry about some things and, and nowadays we go to bed we've got two or three locks on our doors and, and then we have other props to prop our doors and, and there's just seem to be no security and no peace but the book of Psalms the 16th chapter and the 7th verse said if we're walking with God I have set the Lord always before me because he is my right hand I shall not be moved amen if you're walking with God saints you have security 
security and you have peace and you have joy and God will take care of you if you walk with God. If you walk with God, you don't have to fear anything. Now, now you know, I, 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 never, I was telling somebody the other day, you guys know him, the reason I would say it, but I remember evangelist Joe Roper. How many of y'all ever remember Joe Roper? Joe was a big old boy. Man, he was a big one, but Joe was a fraidy cat. Now, believe it or not, Joe, Joe would get scared in a minute. Joe would tell me tales, Brother Caldwell, about running revivals and, uh, and, and living out near the cemetery, and that bothered Joe a lot. But the one that really bothered me is Joe went in the bank when he pastored up at, up at Traveler's Rest, and that morning he had his pistol with him. And he just had it in his pocket, and he just jumped out of the car and ran in the bank. And while he was in the bank, a guy came in and robbed the bank. Joe said they came in with guns, and he said, I sat there afraid to death they was going to find my pistol. And if they'd have found my pistol, they would have killed me. And Joe, you know, he, he was a Christian, but at that moment in time, he didn't really trust God. But we don't have to fear if we're serving God. If we're walking with God, saints, there is nothing for us to fear. Isaiah 41 and 10 said, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. If you're walking with God today, you don't have to fear anything, anybody. God's going to take care of you. Amen. Hard for us sometimes as humans to, uh, to grasp that. Hard sometimes for us to, to pull that in and, and, and little things begin to, to worry us. Amen. But can I tell you, in all the circumstances of life, as we journey from earth to glory, it's no wonder that the psalmist said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after Him, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire at His temple. Amen. He said, All I'm going to do is walk with God. God's going to take care of me. I'm going to have peace. I'm going to have security and I don't have to worry about anything else because I am walking with God. My Amen. Lord. Amen. Saints, we need to walk with God. Yes, we do. Not on rare occasions, but every moment that we live. Another attribute of walking with God is we have spiritual enlightenment. Now, communion with God is not necessarily scholarship. But communion with God opens the mind to God. Amen. When it opens the mind to God, then you begin to think the things God would have you to think. Amen. Now Enoch was no scholar. Don't have any, any indication anywhere that Enoch was a scholar. But in the book of Jude, verse 14 and 15, thousands of years before Enoch time and before Jude's time, Enoch received a revelation from God. Now this was the revelation. Jude 14, 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Now he even named him, brought him down, let you know which Enoch he's talking about. Prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints yes. to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Amen. Amen. Spiritual enlightenment does not come with anything but a close relationship with God. Amen. Amen. I look back at this great church that we call the Church of God and where God has brought us from and what God's brought us to. Some of the two is not as good as it ought to be. <laughs> I heard an evangelist say last Sunday night and I agree 100% with him. In general, I'm not talking about the Donald's church. 
But in general, the church is not the church that I join. Amen. So some places you don't even recognize the church. But I remember the church of spiritual enlightenment. For saints of God that didn't have a whole lot of, of, of formal education, but they had a lot of God. God would reveal things to them. And what has brought this church to, uh, from the mountains of North Carolina and, and, and Tennessee, what's brought this church around the world and the sun never sets on the church of God is not scholarship, but it's spiritual enlightenment. Amen. Now we're turning fastly and we're getting to the point that you've got to have a doctor's degree. And you know, I kind of like Frank Culpepper now. We've got more degrees than we got Timothy. Amen. Can I tell you this morning, saying spiritual enlightenment means more. I believe in education. Get all you can get. Get as much as you want. But keep your eyes and your walk with God. As long as you walk with God, you're going to be all right. My old grandmother, I'll never forget her. Day I die, I'll never forget Grandma Sue. My grandmother lived down here on, on Greenville Mill Village down in Greenwood. She had an ankle that I always remember as a little boy. Her ankle, she didn't have a bone on that ankle. It was just eat out. There was just a hole there. Every night that I can remember in Grandma's life, she took some little old patterns. I don't know what they were. They looked like BCs to me, but I don't guess they were. But she'd take some little old patterns and sprinkle them in that soil, wrap that soil up and put old ugly rubber stocking on it. That was how I remember my grandmama. My grandmama couldn't read her name in boxcar letters. She came out of the mountains of Tennessee. Couldn't read her name in boxcar letters. But she could go to the Word of God and pick out things that where God wanted her to understand it. Amen. And she could understand a few things. Not an educated woman at all. But she had spiritual enlightenment. Yes, One night she had the Church of God evangel in her hand. Now let me tell you, there is no power in the Church of God evangel. But she had the Church of God evangel in her hand and God spoke to her through that spiritual enlightenment. And he said, Lisa, put that spiritual, put that evangel on that sore and wrap it up. My grandmama put that evangel on that sore and wrapped it up. Now I'm going to tell you, you can wrap every evangel you want to wrap up and it might not happen to you. But the next morning, Grandma began to see something different on her ankle. And a few years later, when Grandma left this world, she had an ankle. God had healed that ankle. Amen. I'm going to tell you, saints, it wasn't education. It was spiritual enlightenment that she got from walking with God. Amen. Doesn't matter who you are, where you are, where you're from. You can walk with God and have spiritual enlightenment. Amen. That's what we need. We've got too many people today that don't know anything about God except what the preacher tells them on Sunday morning. Yeah, right. And I've got news for you, friend. All preachers you can't believe on Sunday morning. Yeah, right. You've got to have spiritual enlightenment for yourself. Yeah. To walk with God means purity of heart. Yeah. Just any old body can't walk with God got to be somebody that's good and sanctified. Amen. Yes. Then you can walk with God. It's a consciousness of God. A consciousness of God is a cleansing factor. I want to ask you this morning, just think a moment of the best Christian that you know, the best Christian you've ever met. And there was something very special about them. They had purity of heart. Amen. I'm going to tell you something today. Purity of heart means more than anything else. Not only will you have purity of heart, but you'll have beauty in your character. Beauty of character. Your life might be quiet. Nobody might know who you are or where you are. And your name is not mentioned on television every night. It's not put in the newspaper every day. But your life influences somebody around you as you walk. Amen. And if you've got beauty of character and you're walking with God, there's no telling who you're influencing. 
I run across young people every day. They're not young anymore. They're older people now. That I used to pastor when they were little folks. And they can tell me things that we said and done. And we had an influence on their life. Now that influence is either going to be for good or bad. If you're walking with God, it's going to be for good. Amen. Yeah. Can I tell you, beauty of character means more than anything you can think. Enoch wrought more good in his walk with God than Nebuchadnezzar did. And Nebuchadnezzar built marvelous structures in Babylon. Amen. History knows all about him. But Enoch's character was better. Augustus found Rome in brick. And when he left, it was all marble. He had built great, beautiful structures. But Enoch did more good for mankind than Augustus did. Yes. Those Egyptians, those kings and monarchs down in Egypt built those great pyramids. But you hear more about Enoch today than you hear about them because Enoch walked with God. What the world needs today Saints is men and women, boys and girls that will walk with God. Just claiming baptism, just claiming belief is not enough in this hour. We need people to walk with God. To walk with God means that you please God. For his translation, Enoch had that testimony that he pleased God. Amen. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the 5th verse, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death oh, and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Amen. When you roll me into the church and they have the final service, if if they can say nothing else, but he pleased God. That's all that counts. Amen. Glory be to God that he pleased God. I'm talking about this walk with God. We're living in a in a weird time, saints. God in this hour is more concerned about our walk than he is our work. Amen. Amen. A lot of folks working for God. Some folks are so wrapped up with their working for God, they don't even have time to live for him. Some folks are so wrapped up in their working for God that they lose out because they fail to pray and seek him. Amen. Martha was taken up with service for the Lord. But Mary was taken up with the Lord himself. And the scripture says, Mary hath chosen the better part. Amen. Amen. This walk with God. Now how do we develop this walk with God? The walk with God, first of all, we must trust in the atoning blood of Jesus Christ who gave his life on Calvary. The scripture says there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus. Oprah, I am sorry, honey, but there's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ the Son. Amen. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. What was it? A blood sacrifice. Amen. The only way, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. And so to enter that walk with God, we must accept that shed blood sacrifice that Jesus gave for us. And then we must follow him in sanctification. Now, I know you hear about sanctification, but we've got some Church of God folks who don't even know what it is. The Scripture says to follow peace with all men and holiness, 
without which no man shall see the Lord. If you translate it, it simply follow peace with all men and sanctification without which no man shall see the Lord. To be sanctified is simply this. It's a separation from the world and a separation unto God. Amen. You know, you just don't separate from the world. You've got to come from, away from the world and unto God. And when you are, you're getting ready to get on that walk with God. Then there's that infilling of the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost baptism that comes down and touches you and fills you. I heard one of the greatest preachers on the face of the earth this morning. One of, one of, my, one of my choice preachers, uh, you know, say something this morning that, uh, uh, that I believe and I don't believe. Now... I, how you do that? I'll tell you how you do it. I believe every born again child of God has the Spirit of God. But I don't believe every born again child of God has the infilling of the Holy Ghost. It's a separate blessing that God gives to us. This great preacher this morning said everybody that's ever saved has got has got the Holy Spirit. Well, yes and no. Yeah, they, they, uh, they do have the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit of God, you can't call Jesus Lord. But they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. To walk with God, you've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost that separates you from the world and the things of the world separates you unto God. Uh, and you can't live like the world and stay filled with the Holy Ghost. You can't speak in church on Sunday and go to the club on Saturday night. You just don't do it. You got to walk with God. So this is this is how you get on that walk with God. It's a life that is totally dedicated to God. Mm. Totally dedicated to God. Not shaken by every wind of doctrine. I got a hush. If you want to get, if you want to get your faith shaken, spend all day in front of the television on the religious channels. You better off watching Fox News. There's so many things that's wrong. Now there's some right there. Thank God there's some right, but there's so many things that are wrong. Everybody's got an opinion. Some of those opinions won't let you walk with God. you got to walk with God. You've got to understand yourself who God really is. That's how you develop this walk with God. Being saved, being sanctified, being filled with the Spirit. We're living in a complex day. This is probably the most complex day that the world has ever known. Amen. A few weeks ago, and I'm not a politician, please understand that. But a few weeks ago, my wife and I had the privilege with some other folks to take a little trip. We went into Illinois and went and saw Abraham Lincoln's presidential library. As we walked through that library that morning, my heart began to be struck. Here's a man that the people of America elected as president of the United States. When he went in office, everybody around him made fun of him. They made caricatures of him and put in their papers, made him look like a buffoon. Nobody was speaking good of Abraham Lincoln. Nobody. They walked and made fun of him. As I walked through that library, I, I understood that. <coughs> But it dawned on me, I'm living in a day when the same thing is happening. Whether you like him, don't like him, doesn't matter to me. What does matter to me is he's my president. The American people elected Donald Trump as president of the United States. 
And what are we doing to him? Making him a buffoon. Amen. Making him, mocking him, making fun of him. Everything that he does, somebody's ready. It's all a, it's all a contrived thing to pull this government down. They did Abe Lincoln that way. Abe Lincoln is dead now. History speaks for itself. He was probably one of the greatest presidents the United States ever had. We might see history repeat itself. I don't know. But what I'm saying is we're living in a difficult day. You don't know what to do. You read the newspaper. You don't even know who to believe. You listen to the news. You don't know who to believe. You listen to preachers. You don't know who to believe. We better get close to God. Start our walk with God. And let God give us spiritual enlightenment to lead us in this day. It's not what other people say. It's what God will tell us that's finally important. In this day, we need to, we need to look away from, from some of the junk out there. Cut on, the, cut on the news and get all down, you know. Now, I'll tell you, Dr. Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, he wasn't a preacher, he was a psychologist, but he was right. We make our own feelings by what we think about. We get our mind on God, meditate on the Word of God, the blessings of God, the things of God, and God will lead us where He wants us to go. Yes. We need to get our heads up out of the dust and up toward glory. Lift our heads toward the sky and say, God, I'm on your side. I'm walking with you today. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. And I'm going to walk with you today. Amen. We need time to assess our walk with God. See how things are in our life. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that is really important is... Have we really walked with God? Yes. I want somebody to come get me some music. I'm going to close out here in just a moment. I don't care what kind of music it is as long as it's good music. <laughs> and if it's at Donald's, it'll be good music. I got to thinking about you get up in the morning you cut on the news and you hear all the bad stuff and immediately you're down. Dragging around. If you cut on the news and there is some good news there, you're up. And your day goes real good. Amen. Can I tell you that every morning that you wake up, you need to say thank you, Lord, for giving me another day. Amen. Amen. I, I never will forget over in the black church where, uh, where I was preaching one night and, and they gave testimony meeting and this lady jumps up and she says, I thank the Lord that I woke up this morning with my blood running warm in my veins. And I got, I got, that's my philosophy now. I thank the Lord. At 81 years, I thank the Lord that I woke up this morning and the blood is running warm in my veins. Amen. And all day long, I'm just going to walk and praise God for that. Amen. One old worldly, one old worldly uh, songwriter said, said it this way years ago. He said, the moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. The stars belong to everyone. They gleam there for you and me. The flowers in spring, the robins that sing, the sunbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine. And love can come to everyone because the best things in life are free. Can I tell you, you can't buy it. You just have to receive it. And when you do, you can walk with God. Would you stand with me this morning? Amen. Come on, boys. Give me some music. Amen. Praise God. I don't know how we're going to close this service today, but I'll tell you what I want. I want you in your spirit right now just to bow your head for one moment. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would sweep over this congregation. If there are those here today, Lord, that, that are walking with God, I want you to touch them in a special way. If there are those here, Lord, that need to get on this walk with God toward heaven, I pray you would touch them today. Bring them to this altar that they may get started toward glory. Now, Father, I pray that you would move in a very, very special way. 
If you're here this morning, saint, and, and you love God with all of your heart, and you want to walk with God like never before, I want you to lift your hands toward heaven right where you are, and just begin to praise God right out of your spirit. Amen. Just praise Him right out of your spirit. God, I want to walk with you. God, I want my life to count for you. God, I want to know where you want me to go. Give me spiritual enlightenment. Give me purity of character, Lord. Let me walk with God. Amen. You're here this morning and you don't know Jesus. I promised a long time ago when I started preaching I would give people opportunity. You're here this morning and you're not walking with God. You'd like to accept Him this morning as your Lord and your Savior. I want you just to lift up your hand and we'll pray for you. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Father, Father, I thank you today for your love and your mercy. I thank you today, Lord, for your blessings. I thank you today for Brother Hollis and his wife. Brother Wallace and his wife and his, his family. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given them this church to, to be under shepherd to. And I thank you, Lord, for all they've done. And I thank you, Father, for what you've done in this midst. And now, Lord, we give you this day. We give it for your glory. Keep us in the center of your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Praise God. Did you enjoy that this morning? Give it a big hand. You know, I like to hear a bad when comes preach the Word. Amen. I'm not interested in their philosophies. I'm not interested in what they believe. Amen. Unless it comes from the Bible. Brother Porterfield has always been that kind of man. We've got a brand new couple in church today. They've been here before, but they've never been here as a couple. They could have come Wednesday night, but they weren't here, but that's beside the point. But uh, they're here with us today, Chris and Lori. I hope and pray they have much happiness. I hope they'll put the Lord first in their lives. We love you. We appreciate you. Remember tonight, church. Ladies, you don't have to cook. You don't have to cook supper if you don't want to. Between you and your way. But if you don't, it might be a problem. Of course, you know, we, since I've been here, Brother Porterfield, we got a lot of men that cooks in this church. I'm not one of them, but we got a lot of men that cook. God bless you. We appreciate you. We love you. Stay and eat with us. You go eat somewhere. Stay and eat with us. And the Lord will bless you. Father, Lord God, we thank you today for this service. Father, we thank you for everyone that has come, Lord God, for the way you minister in our lives, Father. Thank you for the word that was spoken today, Father. Help us each one to take the word and apply it to our lives, Lord God. As we leave the house of God, let our lives shine in the communities that we go into, Father. Father, we just honor you and praise you today in Jesus Christ's precious name.